Okay, folks, it's been a while since we've looked at celebrities setting boundaries, but it's one of my favorite things to see. Extremely uncomfortable. She said that on live TV. Hey, here's why you're wrong. <laughs> What's next? I feel like day to day, we as humans get put in uncomfortable positions, but celebrities are actually PR trained to try to be a little bit more tight-lipped. However, celebrities are more likely to get probed by paparazzi, interviewers, just random people because they want to draw that emotion out. They want that reaction. But let's see what happens when celebrities are forced to set boundaries. I found this clip on TikTok that made me extremely uncomfortable. It was David Letterman talking to Lindsay Lohan about, I don't know, I guess just what she was going through at the time. This clip is from 2013. Let's see if Lindsay does a good job of setting boundaries. Aren't you supposed to be in rehab now? Oh my God! Do Are you not you? watch anything that goes on? I do. Tabloid now? No, no, Ooh, oh my God. So he immediately starts off with something off the cuff, man. He said, aren't you supposed to be in rehab right now? Lindsay hits him with the change of tone and the disapproving facial expression. That is a good way to set boundaries, but sometimes people feel uncomfortable when you do that to them and they don't like to feel uncomfortable, so they'll push back even harder on you. But David's a professional, so let's see what he says. Second. I was under the, May 2nd. Yes. And how long will you be in rehab? Uh, three months. How many times have you been in rehab? Several. She does and not what, want to answer what, How will this time be different? What are they rehabbing, first of all? What, what is on their list? What are, what are they going to work on when you walk through the door? We didn't discuss in the, this in the pre-interview. No, but, but <laughs> it'll be three months and... and you're no, looking... I think, I think wow. to be honest, I'm, I'm the happiest when I'm working and the healthiest. And I think this is an opportunity for me to you know, focus on what I love in life. This is so uncomfortable because she says, we didn't discuss this in the pre-interview. A lot of times before a celebrity goes on a show, they ask the host what questions are gonna be asked. And sometimes some celebrities are very like tight about it and they want an exact list of things that are gonna be discussed on the show before they agree to it. They apparently gave Lindsay a list and talking about her rehab was not on it. She didn't agree to this. So it's not only asking her in a public setting about her very personal life to possibly millions of people, but they basically lied to her. They tricked her. And now they're forcing her into a corner and trying to get her to speak about these experiences for their own television ratings. Be able to, yeah, it was yeah, perhaps a, a life a saver, a career saver. Yeah. Is, is it uh, like alcohol? Do you drink too much? We've discussed this in the past. Oh, did we really? When did we discuss well, because it? Because I'm the one who's having the blackouts. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, I'm the one that's having the blackouts. Dude, this is really tough to see because this is such a great example of a guy just like pushing through a girl's like boundaries in a conversation and a woman like just not knowing what to do. That's what this feels like to me. Feeling like you're not cool if you don't answer the questions or like you're like you're not doing a good job unless you answer the questions that he wants. Like this is just so uncomfortable. So now, uh, uh, when you when you go to the rehab, what do they well, do? Well, let's let's. This is we have to. We're here for a movie. We have to what? Let's stay on the positive. She came to promote oh, a movie. Like aside from that side of the positive. Yeah. All right. Come now, on now. No. Okay. We'll talk about the movie. I've Spirit. been here since I was seven. Seven years old. How many times do you think you've been here? I wouldn't know. I'll have to find out in rehab. <laughs> <sighs> You know, that is because so. of the jokes and stuff, but yet you have enough spine, uh, enough sense of yourself, enough poise to come out here and talk to me. She is hating this, hating it. I have been in this situation so many times where I'm uncomfortable, but I'm just gonna go with the flow for now because I don't know how to stand up for myself in the moment. Some of us just like, we don't have a lot of experience in standing up for ourselves, especially like in public like this, you know? You, you have to do it gracefully. And I, I have an example of this afterwards actually that I'm really excited to show you, but I have been in this exact situation that Lindsay is in and you don't know what to do. So you kind of just swallow it and you get through it and then you let yourself be mad about it later. <laughs> oh, is she gonna cry? All right, all right, that's enough. Um, so, oh, I thought this was gonna be vodka. Oh!
Now, you, you, you gotta, you, Shucks. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> stop drinking. They don't, need to, they don't let you drink in rehab, It was do they? a joke. I know. <laughs> I, mean. I wish you'd come out with the tags on your dress, though. I know, it would have been so funny. What? Yeah. Uh, we'll do it's that. It's not on, funny because do that on Fallon. It's hurtful towards me. <laughs> oh my God, dude! Through laughing, she said, "It's actually not funny. It's hurtful to me." And you know what sucks too? Right now, David Letterman is just throwing Lindsay under the bus for ratings. He's like, "I got to do my show. She's here." It's, you know, the other thing about it is you on this show on a regular basis. What does this show come on? Every single night? Let one episode be a flop. If someone's uncomfortable, pull back in the interview and just let the episode be a flop. This was so uncomfortable. And at one point she even kind of pleads with him by saying like, hey, I've been coming on here since seven or hey, we've talked about this before, like you and me one-on-one. -on -one. She's pleading to him like, hey, I know everyone's watching right now, but don't we have a bond? Don't we have a relationship? Can you stop? You can hear it. <laughs> no. Oh, I love seeing you. Yeah, I love seeing you, honestly. I do. It's nice. oh, you, uh, Stop. Yeah, oh, she's tearing up a little bit. God oh bless her. my God, <laughs> dude. He said, oh, she's tearing up a little bit. God bless her. Quick thanks to Kara for sponsoring this video. Look folks, you need your vitamins. I need you to live a long, healthy, happy life. And it's not just because I want you to keep watching my videos. Look, I'm happy you're here, but I also love if you're feeling great and you're into a routine. And that is what my favorite thing about Kara is. They're not just vitamins. They're personalized vitamins that conveniently fit into your purse, your car, wherever, so that when you're on the go, you can stay in your routine. You're not driving, headed to work and you're like, oh my God, I forgot my vitamins. Then the next day you're like, well, I already forgot the last time, so who cares? No, 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 no. They come in this cute little bag and you can take them with you anywhere. Keep them in your car, keep them in your purse, or just put them next to your microwave in the morning so you remember to take them. Oh, and if you're new here and you don't know what I mean by personalized, I mean that when you get your first order of Kara vitamins, you go to the website and you take this nice little quiz. It just kind of asks you what's going on, what are your health concerns, what are you thinking about, what do you think that your body might need in the moment, and then Care of does all the work for you. They pick your perfect vitamins, assemble them into these cute little packages, and then they send them over. They also have additional add-ons you can choose like probiotics or collagen, just whatever you think you need in the moment, and you can change it up every quarter, you can change it up every month, and figure out what the right mix for you is. But above all, it's all about staying in the routine. And Care Of makes it super easy. All you have to do is go to the link in the description, take the little quiz if it's your first time, and then find out what's recommended for you. And then use my code, Bose50, and you can get 50% off of your first order. That's right, 50% off. Just use the code Bose50. And thanks again to Care Of for sponsoring this video. Here's another interview that I really, really like. Oh my goodness, the beautiful Sophia. David Letterman, this is a shorter one, but he says something that I think is pretty off color and she responds, <laughs> she responds incredibly elegantly, I think. We're trying to make it up to you for the shingles. Uh, uh, so you are in the Andes, so they're very, very high there, aren't very they? Very high, yeah. yes. Yeah. Now, the other thing I know about Colombia is if, if I were to go there, I would worry that I might get beaten up and kidnapped. Now, would, would that no, happen? No, no, no. no. But is, is, it, is it safe to travel to you Colombia? You know what? Colombia has changed a lot. Why do you have to say all that? In this moment, the way that she looks off to the side, like, did he really just say that? It's almost like she's able to process it very briefly for a second, I'm slowing it down. But then she snaps into her response. Like, down. watch her face. Now, would, would that no, happen? No, no, no. no. But is, is it, is <laughs> Dude, it she, her face just like, Ugh. why would he say that? It's such a brief micro expression. And obviously I might be assuming here, but she just kind of snaps into, oh my God, let me respond to this fool. I got this. And I, I think it's I think it's really good. Safe to travel to You Colombia? know what, Colombia has changed a lot in the past 10 years. It's not like, you know, where the cartel wars were happening. Mm -hmm. We've had a fantastic president. Now we have a new president. Things are going well. Even today, one of the biggest, you know, military uh, troubles was solved. This guy was uh, killed in Colombia. So it's getting better and better. I think it's, you know, a lot of people go to Colombia for tourism, mm -hmm. to cartel. Yeah. Americans are still a little bit scared, but it's it's opening up to the world. I feel better knowing that today you killed a guy in Colombia. <laughs> uh, you know that? Pandejo. Who is 
watching this guy. Maybe it's just not for me. But I really like that David Letterman said something really offensive in that moment. And me personally, I would sit here and I would want to snap back to reality. I would want to say something. I would want to say now, why, why did you say that, you know? But she's a lot better than me. She, you know, kind of has her moment and then she just goes, well, actually with a smile, here's why you're wrong. And you know, it's really annoying because a lot of times as women, we are not allowed to get angry over something because then otherwise people say we're being too emotional. But she responds so elegantly. She smiles, she's laughing, but she also explains, hey, here's why you're wrong. And here's some information about the country. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? And I love it. It's just really beautiful. This one is kind of just a weird one. I found this video of Justin Bieber telling the paparazzi that he's just really anxious and, you know, he wants to be left alone. But what's so strange about this clip is he's out somewhere in Melrose in Los Angeles, California, trying to get a coffee. And to me, this is like a freaking episode of Black Mirror. Watch what happens. And there's Justin Bieber. In, in the gray, just the man is just trying to get a coffee. Dude. Oh, is that Haley too? Paparazzi over here, like. Brrr. Dude, that that is so weird to me. This is so weird. Can you think about going outside, thinking about going to a 7-Eleven sometime like in the past couple of weeks and can you imagine there just being a crowd of people and everybody's staring at you and there's just like 10 people subtly with their phones up like this? Bro, I do not want to be famous. This sounds like a nightmare. Would you be able to handle being this famous? That's so creepy! That feels so creepy to me! And dude, he's like in a full disguise and everyone's like, that's Bieber. He's coming by himself. Oh my God, dude, this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. A nightmare. I get anxiety with you guys continuously shooting. So he comes out of the coffee shop and he says, hey, I'm getting anxiety with you guys continuously shooting. The thing that sucks about this is like, if somebody says that to me, if I'm making anybody anxious about something, I'm gonna be like, oh, sh like, please take your space. But the annoying thing is with paparazzi, they're like, oh, he's vulnerable. Maybe here's a moment for more, but let's see what they do. Oh, for real? No, no, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. I'll go, Jay. Oh, she's asking for a photo. Did, wait, I want to know, did she get the photo? Like this girl, chat, I gotta ask you, would you be like this girl in the moment when the man's trying to get away from the cameras? Granted, she didn't know what he said. And you know, there's all these people. One in the chat, if you would just be like, hey, Justin, can I just get a picture? Two in the chat, if you wouldn't do it. No right or wrong answers here. I'm a hard two. Would it, would it, would it be cool to have a picture with Justin Bieber and be like, yo, look at this. Yeah, of course it would be cool, but A, I'm not putting myself out there. B, I ain't gonna bother the man. You don't wanna get your side, it's just the Yeah. Oh, did she give him the, did she, did he give her the photo? Is he doing it? Oh, he did it! He took the picture with her. Wait, that's actually so nice. Oh, I actually feel bad for him, bro. Dude, Black Mirror, Black Mirror. I have a little quick clip for you. Listen, everyone handles uncomfortable situations differently, but there is one person who pretty legendarily says exactly how they feel. Now, Joan is no longer with us, but let's look at this short clip of her firing back on a rude interviewer. He has a tractor and he smashes up old cars just to get tension out of him. Did you ever run up to someone and say, hey, how did you get so rich? And the woman said, by riding on my mom's coattails, and you said, Melissa, this oh. is my yeah. show. I what don't are you think doing? so. <laughs> and I think we're gonna end the interview right now. No. Don't get so fucking smart. Oh. Uh, we'll apologize for Joan's uh, length. She said that on live TV. You're not supposed to curse on TV. 
uh, we'll apologize for Joan's uh, language right there at the end. You're just trying to be funny with her, and I had no idea around. that she Why? would do that. We apologize yeah, for that funny, this morning. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Next, stop. Moxie, please go to sleep. Moxie, please go to sleep. <laughs>